like to, at this moment, introduce the valedictorian. Dr. John Vongas defended his PhD dissertation, Competition, Power, and Testosterone, How Winning and Losing Affect Men's Empathic, empathic and Accuracy and Aggression in May 2015, under the supervision of Dr. Ronald Ferguson from the Department of Management. Dr. Vonga's research explores the hormonal, cognitive, and behavioral outcomes of competition. I think we could use some help. In particular, Dr. Vonga's investigates how changes in social status following a competition affect men's aggression, as well as their ability to accurately interpret others' emotions. In doing so, he also analyzes whether their psychological need for power and their testosterone influence these relationships. Given that the workplace is a social arena where status is gained and lost, his findings shed light on the mechanisms that govern reactions to changes in people's status and, more importantly, help predict how they might respond to others. Dr. Vonga is currently an assistant professor on a limited term appointment in the Department of Management at Concordia University. I would now like to ask Dr. John Vonga to give the valedictory address. Chancellor Wiener, Chairman Hébert, President and Vice-Chancellor Shepard, Dr. Chrétien Desmarais, distinguished guests and participants, fellow students, families and friends, I'm pleased to address you today on behalf of the graduating students of the class of 2015. Congratulations, félicitations. Before I begin, I would like to thank my supervisor, Dr. Ronald Ferguson, and my dissertation committee, my department chair, Dr. Linda Dyer, my fellow uh, PhD colleagues, including Regid, Guillaume, and Tony, the world's best office mates, including Paul Mark over there as well, and our JMSB faculty members for making my journey a truly unforgettable one. To the graduates, leaving from one of Canada's premier business schools, most of you have decided on what you want to be by choosing your domain. But you will soon begin to tackle another question. Who do you want to be, or better yet, what do you wish to be remembered for? A recent study that tracks human achievement, known as the Pantheon Project, explored biographies written in over 25 languages of over 11,300 historical figures, from Abraham and Anne Boleyn to Zenobia and Zinedine Zidane. These individuals came from all domains of art, science, religion, politics, medicine, the military, and economics and business. The two people who contributed the most to world culture, it turns out, are Aristotle and Plato, the founders of the academic institutions that we have today. What these two also have in common, however, is a connection to their mentor, Socrates. And there is probably no other person who can better clarify the question of who do you want to be than Socrates. So what can the most important of all philosophers teach aspiring business leaders such as yourselves, you might ask? Here are three simple lessons. The first is to know thyself. This is critical because without it, you risk being led astray from your goals. We know that optimism and confidence help drive business and entrepreneurship, but overconfidence leads to unethical behavior and financial collapse. This may be what West Coast rappers had in mind in the 1990s when dropping rhymes like, you better check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> in business and personal affairs, however, this extends to wrecking others as well. Examining yourself will also prevent you from being influenced by other people, especially powerful people. When it comes to ideas, what matters most is the quality and substance of an argument, not the prestige 
or social status of the person with whom you are interacting. Great talent and ideas can be found from working class neighborhoods to gated communities. It'll be your job to find that talent wherever it is. With self-scrutiny, you will also be likely to treat people with respect. Not knowing who you are and where you stand will turn every negotiation into a win-lose competition and hinder your chance to establish common ground. The second lesson is to know the extent of your own ignorance. To many people, this remains the very essence of an educated person. Albert Einstein once said that the difference between stupidity and genius is that genius has its limits. Socrates was suspicious of the obvious, and he was almost always able to show that the obvious is rarely true and that the truth is rarely obvious. It is no wonder that the most creative people in most domains, including business, are often the ones who ask a lot of good questions. At JMSB, we take Socratic inquiry very seriously. Many of you have either participated in or witnessed our success in both national and international case competitions, and this is due in part with the ability to take a step back and ask clarifying questions. My colleagues in management are tirelessly driven by this pursuit of knowledge, and they pursue topics that range from how to transfer knowledge from senior workers to junior ones to how companies can run profitably and sustainably. Their questions are both interesting and important, and many of you will be challenged by them as business leaders soon enough. Finally, the third lesson is to use your words thoughtfully when dealing with other people. Socrates valued words and used them with care, not only for the sake of an argument, but also to preserve good relations with others. Staying humble could be the hardest thing to do when things don't go your way and when you, experi and when you experience injustice. But if you choose to take the high road, you might get a better view and probably inspire a few along the way. Mohandas Gandhi, as was mentioned earlier, and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. are shining examples. Throughout your careers, you will have your share of tension with employees, supervisors, and friends and family. In moments of dispute, temper your need for power. Take it from me, a guy who studies dominance and testosterone. Donc, cher finissant, je vous laisse avec ces points clés provenant de la sagesse de Socrate. Sachez qui vous êtes, connaissez vos limites, maîtrisez le contrôle de soi. Je vous félicite encore une fois et particulièrement vos familles et amis qui vous ont supporté financièrement et psychologiquement à travers toutes ces années. Sans eux, vous ne serez pas ici. Last but not least, I thank my loving parents, Lola and George, for sending me to Socrates Elementary School here in Montreal, where I first became acquainted with my hero Socrates in Greek, my mother tongue. To my beautiful, intelligent wife, Reem, for sticking by my side and for our wonderful moments together. To my Chris sister, Christina, and my brother-in-law, Jerry, for raising the bar, the bar ever so high. And all of my dear friends for their enduring support and love. Thank you. Dr. Vonga, thank you for your sage remarks and comments. I, uh, I found your address illuminating, and I hope all of you will join me in thanking him.